think it's time we announce our giveaway winners, don't you? I mean, it's been a couple weeks, right? Coffee? You haven't had your coffee yet. Since when do you drink coffee? How would you even... All right, fine. Have your coffee. I'm not even going there, bud. Okay, you ready now? Thanks everyone for participating in the giveaway. All your comments, over 1,300 of them, probably around 1,400, were so encouraging, so kind. It was worth the giveaway just to see your comments. And obviously I can't respond to all those comments, but I did read every one. So thank you, thank you for participating. Really great to hear from so many of you, uh, especially a number of you that don't usually comment. So the winners were Linda Smith, and Philip Murphy. They have been contacted. They have accepted their prizes. I have their information and I'm going to send out the package sometime towards the end of this week. Probably by the time you're watching this video. All right, let's get to this episode. I want to dive right into it. You know, every week I try to determine what I'm going to do and I'll be very honest with you. A lot of times it's just whatever I feel like doing. Okay, but that's important because I feel like I really have the enthusiasm and the drive to do that episode well, to make the painting something that you can learn from. Anyway, this is something I do very often. It's very closely associated with spontaneous painting. The only difference is I did have a scene in mind. I had a lake scene in mind. And if you want to get better at wet and wet application of watercolor pigment, the best way is just to get out sheets of watercolor paper and play. Just play with the wet washes, see how they interact, dab in more water, dab in more pigment, and make mental notes to yourself. I have done that many, many times, and wet and wet play is just a great way to learn. And you learn the stages at which things dry, and the stages at which you can add varying amounts of pigment. And it's a whole style of painting too. I mean, wet and wet painting can make the entire painting with very little sort of sharp wet on dry detail. So that's what I did here. I had a misty lake, sort of a misty foggy lake in mind, and uh, I kind of moved towards that. But other than that, uh, it was spontaneous. I let watercolor do its thing in a lot of cases, and you'll see that. And the wet and wet foundation stood for a lot of the painting by the end, and I did very minimal detail. So that's always great to see watercolor using its mind, partnering with me, or me partnering with it, and coming up with something that looks like you spent hours planning and designing and laying out. So anyway, come along with me as I do some wet and wet play on a misty foggy lake. Well, I'm gonna use an Arches watercolor block. I mean, it seems like it's been a while since I've used Arches. Uh, actually, I'd use the pads pretty frequently, but I've been testing so many other papers that uh, block, I haven't used a block in a while. This is about the only planning I did, is just a little bit of drawing where the landforms are going to be. I wanted to know where my water line was, because that's going to be important as I lay in the washes. So in this respect, it wasn't very spontaneous. So to start with, I'm just going to wet it with uh, my Sterling Edwards brush. You can do this with spray, but I wanted to bring the moisture down to a certain line. And you'll see in a little bit, I kind of get a little wild and start spraying and just trying different things. But I started off uh, at least just wetting the paper thoroughly. Gonna lay in my sky. Some cobalt violet, a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of Payne's gray. And you can see just how quick I laid the sky in. I didn't do much at all. Nine times out of ten, those make the best skies. Just dab and go. Everything is still wet down to those first shorelines. So I'm going to lay in those distant hills. And while I want everything to look rainy, misty, and foggy, uh, the wet and wet just works really well. So I'll dry out the brush and I'll stop the flow a bit. I don't mind it being soft, but I don't want that water to continue to run down. And it becomes important uh, as I have wet paper and I'm doing wet and wet to keep everything worked sort of simultaneously. So you see me go back and forth. I'm laying in some of those same 
uh, colors that were in the back hill. But I'm adding a little bit of phthalo green, a little bit of olive green, and just letting all that color play. Uh, here's where I started to get wild. I just wanted to shake things up a bit. I thought, eh, I just, you know, no guts, no glory, just get some spray out and see what happens. Well, you know, it didn't do a whole lot. It lightened uh, some of those hills in the back and it kind of merged the sky with those distant hills. And that's fine. But I kept trying it. <laughs> you know, so a lot of times you're just reacting to what happens, what watercolor is doing. It turned out fine, though, because uh, I ended up with a lighter sort of patch on that left side of those distant hills. And uh, just a good way to stop a flow immediately is with tissue. So that's what I did. That's the kind of thing you need to practice too. See what a tissue will do. See where it will stop the flow where you need it. So I now have a pretty nice soft distant hills. And I'm just wetting the area up there in the little front left corner where I'm going to have a land mass. Just kind of stroking uh, some random strokes in here to get the, the water line sort of established. Being the closest landform, those uh, colors are going to be a little deeper, a little warmer. But I don't want that to dry out that other landform to the left, so I'm stroking in some color over there too, just to keep that wet. That way I'm working everything. And you'll see one of the neat things is the bottom edge of those little strokes that I'm putting in now is sort of negative painting another tree line in front of it. More spray. And I don't want that line there, so I'm going to take that out with tissue. And you've got to do that immediately when you have a wet wash, because if it gets into the paper very much, the tissue won't take it out. And we're just going to establish some ground plane. And I know I've said it in many videos, but as a wet and wet wash progresses, as it soaks in and starts to dry, and it's still plenty wet, but as it starts to dry, the paint moves less. So you can add deeper and deeper pigments. It won't move as far, but you want to reduce your water. As you add more pigment, deeper colors, you want to reduce your water. That's sort of the rule of thumb. And, you know, just going darker and darker. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm really just trying to create some contrast. Some trees that stand out. Some ones that will push the trees behind it back a little bit. Give some dimension to that little bit of a landform, island, jet out there, whatever you want to call it. A distant shoreline which is way too dark so I blend it up with my Sterling Edwards blending brush and now we're going to add and establish some horizontal planes waterline planes and ground planes and do a little bit more of that deep tree painting where it sort of negative automatically negative paints the trees below it that's just the coolest thing ever. Here's another thing I tried. It didn't work. I was just dripping in water from this oiler bottle. I also tried some spatter. I thought maybe I'd get some speckle texture in there. Uh, it did a little bit, but it was too dry. So after thoroughly letting the whole painting dry, I just decided to jump on into the detailing. And what I want you to notice as I work on this is how little I actually had to detail. I just picked a few areas.
to add basically some crisp definition to what looked like was already there mostly these fir trees along the lake and I accentuated contrast where it looked like uh, those washes negative painted for me and I started adding um, some horizontal features to the water just to establish a water line this all went very fast I wanted a little bit of an edge to that back hill just to sort of separate it from the furthest hill but keep it soft where it goes behind the closer landform. I was also trying to increase the idea that there was mist coming around so that's why I'm lifting but I'm also lifting in places just to lighten and it's a tip I repeat a lot but when you use scrubbers like I did on the lifting you don't scrub. Scrubbers are called scrubbers but remember that you don't scrub. You go very lightly. I'm just trying to add some vertical reflections to I uh, thought that the foreground water was a little too light yet. And while it's wet I'm gonna stroke in some soft reflections. There was a little bloom created right there where I'm stroking now and that turned out uh, pretty good. It turned out it worked, I guess, what I'm trying to say. You know, you can get away with a lot in water reflections. If you get uh, features that look like they're vertical going straight down and then you also add some horizontal disturbances, aberrations, you know, where breezes or currents are disturbing the water, it'll, it'll usually look pretty good. I'm just blurring out some edges that I didn't want lines where I didn't want lines. Adding a little bit of shore detail and that's it. I mean, seriously. Didn't take long and I'm really happy with the results. Alright, so I've taken the tape off, done a little fiddling and I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, this is another case of watercolor painted so much of this for me. All I did was sharpen the focus on some foliage forms here and here. I lifted a little bit, as you saw me do in the demo, just to increase the uh, appearance of fog and mist. Um, that little bloom that happened there accidentally has worked out really nice because now I have like a shaft of light coming through these two landforms and I'm really happy with how everything worked out I mean I've, I've not spent more than two hours on this total and I like how misty and subtle these landforms are back here and the skies worked out well I have uh, this little bit of fall down here to the wash which makes it look like sort of a misty rain in the background so great I mean wet and wet play is a fun exercise. It's great to do studies just to see what you can accomplish at various stages throughout the wash while it's wet. You saw several things that I did that tried that didn't work and that's fine. That's that's how you learn. That's how you play. That's how you develop techniques. Thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much patrons for making these episodes possible. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.